Hey guys, this is Dia Mike, and this is Donovan's Tower, uh, episode one. And uh, this is interesting. We have taken a new approach, and I highly encourage this. If you're rising, if you're rising, are you rising? I don't know. I'm sitting at the moment. If you're running a rise of Tiamat, um, and you want to give it a bigger epic scale, run with a B team. All right, the B team. This is the introductionary, the introductionary, the introduction of the B team. And I tell you, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of role playing. And because we had new players, right? I'm sorry, well, new characters for Zonifal's Tower. Now, I didn't immediately take these new characters and throw them into Zonifal's Tower. I thought that would just be ridiculous. Uh, I wanted to be able to spend time with the characters, right? And I think that's important for a DM. You don't want to just take all this new stuff and throw it into the meat grinder right when you start. So I, d I had deliberately paced the adventure so we could kind of get to know one another before we faced some of the major dangers that are present in Rise of Tiamat. So how did I do this? Well, first of all, we did kind of the introductory at the table, as anybody would do, right, before you even begin the game. So we have at least a little bit of familiarity with these new characters. But then we started out in a tavern, which I know is so freaking cliche. And to my credit, all my games have never really started out in a tavern. They've always been somewhere else, you know, in the middle of combat, riding on a horse, you know, anything I can think of besides tavern. But in this case, I kind of felt like maybe it was appropriate uh, for people just to chill for a moment, talk amongst themselves, you know, introduce the new NPC that was sent by the Thieves Guild factions to bring this new group in because they had lost contact with the other group, which is the other players in the campaign. They don't know where they're at. So now they have a, you know, a second group. Anyway, so I paced it deliberately for introductions, right? So we had that in the tavern. And then we had our first encounter in, in a very, just a small little location, a house, a peasant's house. Uh, they had found blood on a trail. They're out there, they're out there on their horses and uh, they're being led towards Waterdeep. They're trying to evade patrols and, you know, the front lines of the cult where all these battles are taking place. And uh, we had I set up a very small encounter in, involving eight phase spiders. Now, why did I do this? Well, first of all, because of the activity of the cult and the dragons now out and about, the dragons have left their lairs and they're going out and they're fighting wars. The big creatures now are becoming a little more, uh, how should we say, brave uh, in wandering out of their caves now, wandering out from the Underdark and starting to take over because the biggest threats are now gone, right? These huge predators, the dragons and whatnot, wormlings, whatever, are all gone. So now the peasantry is starting to feel the effects in the wildlife as all these demonic creatures now are starting to take over. Well, um, that was one reason for the encounter was to show bigger things now are starting to surface. But also I wanted the characters and the players to have an opportunity to run their powers first before we dived headlong into Zonifal's Tower, which is could be a lot of encounters and a lot of different things. So I felt it was important for that. And also to start feeling a little bit of synergy. I think it's good for a DM. You know, you got to think about these things because as your DM, you are a game designer. And so you've got to think about these things as you're putting them together, these encounters and whatnot. So that was a lot of my thought process behind this was let them role play for a little bit. Now let's test the powers. Let's see how we can gel with one another with that, with that encounter with the phase spiders, which went by like, I think it took like an hour, but it went by pretty quickly. There was a little bit of a clumsiness in there uh, in certain spots, but for the most part, it was pretty smooth encounter for everybody and some good role-playing moments in there as well. Uh, but after that encounter, they made their way to Waterdeep and they met with the Thieves Guild. And um, this is where just a lot of role-play happened. And it was good role-play because people needed to connect with the personalities and other people needed to connect with the other personalities of everybody else at the table, right? So everybody was kind of finding their groove. So the, the rest of the night was a lot of role playing, which is great, right? I mean, it was a five hour session and we start off with a 10 minute, this will be up in its own video, 10 and a half minute cutscene, which went by really, really quick. Everybody enjoyed it, which I'm happy about. You know, I thought I thought it was pretty good. It was a pretty well paced cutscene. And the rest of the, the uh, interactions happened on the road. It happened in Waterdeep and from Waterdeep to Zonifal's Tower. I mean, we had our paladin, I'm gonna say all their names wrong, Eloin, 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 okay. The paladin, uh, who was really good at cooking, right? So I mean, he went from end to end on their journeys 
creating all kinds of new recipes and uh, impressing the chefs and whatnot. So there's a whole lot of interaction there that was going on. It was actually very, very entertaining. Our bard was going around charming people, but also making his friends through charming, but also, you know, playing his lute or whatever else he had. I can't remember now. I think he had a harp saxophone. I don't know. He, he had something and, uh, you know, was, you know, just making some money off that. And we had others who were arm wrestling or half work was arm wrestling. You're earning some money that way. Um, and our, uh, our new guy, our monk was making contacts with the Lord's Alliance. And uh, our other one, who is the sister of Pax, who's the A-Team, on the A-Team, you know, the original characters for Horde of Dragon Queen Rise Team Match, she's, the, she's playing her sister. Uh, I'm not going to... Evja? Evja? I think it's Eva? Evja? Hmm? I'll tell you, I'm just going to ruin all these names. And um, she was doing a lot of role-playing and um, going to the temples and whatnot. And it was a lot of fun. You know, it's fun when you role-play and people can actually touch base with their personalities uh, and engage with other NPCs. Um, so it was it was a, it was a very very fun evening. I'm not gonna get all the details right because a lot happened really. But those RP moments pr probably make more sense for my table. They're not gonna be entertaining for you. They were just they were just a lot of fun. A lot of laughing. <laughs> if I could categorize one thing that night was just a lot of laughing. So it was a lot of fun. So beyond all the role playing, they eventually did go to Zomswell's Tower. Uh, I had two. Um, uh, audio uh, tone pieces I used and you can find them on SoundCloud if you want to use them. Uh, one is Iskander's message that was played through a resonance jewel that was hidden in a construct that looked like a crow and a spell was cast on it to make it look like a living crow like organic not construct and was sent to Waterdeep's council and there I played one of the you know first little tone pieces I had there which was Iskander's message. So they did all this research at their temples and whatnot to try to get an idea of what they were getting into they set off for uh, Zonathal's Tower, and they engaged the villagers there, but they weren't very helpful. Um, but they did notice that this area had not been touched by the cult. With all the recklessness that's been going on, it was just unusual to see a town that wasn't burning or had some kind of damage. So that was just a little peculiar to them. But um, they decided to enter the mage. Uh, mage. Did I say mage? I almost said mage. <laughs> they decided to enter the maze, and this is where I played the second audio um, I'll have the, these are again up on my SoundCloud if you want to use them. Taken directly from the box text in uh, chapter six or seven, whatever the the Zonifal's Tower is, but was taken directly from that and uh, just kind of gave it some audio flavor. So so that was you know a lot of fun. But then that's kind of where we stopped. They went to the sundial. We kind of got to that portion and they went one direction on the path and that's where we ended, right? So there's like this whole thing with Zonathal's Tower that still needs to be done, right? So that's as far as we got, guys, it's the, that's it. So the night was fun. It was just a lot of laughter. It was a lot of role playing, which is great. A lot of people connecting with their characters. Um, it, it was just a lot of fun. I encourage it if you're running such a long-term campaign that it might be wise or good idea to maybe introduce a B team just to kind of shake things up a little bit. So guys, thanks for watching. Um, more to come as we as the story unfolds and we continue our trek through Zonifal's Tower. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.